Hello and welcome to this program for design and technology. Today, our topic is joining methods. Most products are made from two or more parts joined together. And as compared to a few years back, we do have a multitude of options available for joining materials. Some of them look so easy on the YouTube. The glue gun, for example. But you must be aware that a sound knowledge of different types and methods of joining materials will help you design and make better products. You will be able to select the most appropriate joining methods for the realization of artifacts. First of all, we will look at the types of joints. Joints can be classified into two broad categories, permanent joints, and temporary joints. Permanent joints cannot be separated without damaging the individual parts. Temporary joints, on the other hand, can be separated without any damage to the separate parts that make up the joint. Joints can also be separated into flexible joints, like those on door hinges and joints between the parts in wrist watches. These allow movement between the parts that have been joined. Rigid joints, on the other hand, do not allow relative movement between the joint parts. To better understand the difference between rigid and temporary joints, we can look at a drawing table. We will see that the legs are joined to the frame through rigid joints. These cannot be moved individually. The joint that we have here is a temporary joint and also rigid. On the other hand, the table top can move relative to the frame and be set at different angles. The joint between the front drawer and the table frame is also flexible. Therefore, the joints that we have here are permanent and flexible. Now let us see which types of joints exist in the table shown. This one is a permanent joint and is also rigid. The next joint allows movement. It is therefore a permanent joint and also flexible. It allows the wheels to turn. Now let us see which types of joints exist in this table. We have both permanent and rigid joints in the table's frame and permanent and flexible joints in the wheels. Can you now identify the type of joining method for the lid? On the bottle? Indeed, it is a temporary joint and is also flexible. Let us look at common joining methods. These are nailing, screwing, bolting, gluing, rivetting, welding, and knockdown fittings. We are first going to have a look at nailing. Nailing is a relatively easy joining method. It is mostly used to join wooden sections and provides permanent and rigid assembly. The different parts of nails are the nail head, and the long thin part known as the shank. The main types of nails we will study are round wire nails, oval wire nails, panel pins and staples. 
Round wire nails have round shanks and flat heads. They are usually made of low carbon steel and are generally used for general joinery work. That is, for the assembly of any common wooden objects and to affix components onto wooden sections. Oval wire nails have small heads and oval shanks. The small heads can be driven below the surface of wood and their oval shanks help to reduce splitting. Panel pins have thin round sections and small heads. These are usually driven below the surface of the material being joined in order to make it almost invisible. They are used where thin wooden sheets have to be joined to a supporting structure, for example in the manufacture of photo frames, flush doors, wall cladding and false ceilings amongst others. Staples can be squared or U-shaped. These can either be hammered into a material or fired in using a staple gun. These are used for rapid joinery, for example in the assembly of wooden crates that are used for packaging. The clout nail is a short nail with a large head. It is used to fix metal sheets onto wooden structures and is mostly used for upholstery work, that is, to place fabrics on padded chairs or canvas on frames. Other types of nails are corrugated nails, which are used to fasten corrugated iron sheets for roofing, hardboard pins, which are used to fasten hardboard to frames, cut tack nails, which are used for upholstery, and masonry nails, which are used for fastening into concrete. Tools that we use for nailing include the bradawl, the hammer, pincers, the nail punch and the nail gun. Hammers are used to drive nails into wood. They all have a flat end but are described according to their second end. For example, we have the cross pane hammer, the ball pane hammer, and the claw hammer. Different types and sizes of hammers are available. It is important to select a hammer according to the size of nail that is being used. A bradawl is a very important tool which is used to mark a starting hole before hammering. Therefore, it makes the driving of nails become easier and more effective. Pincers are used to remove nails and they give leverage that is required to pull out nails without damaging the wood surface. Using a piece of waste to protect the surface of wood while doing so is advised. A nail punch can be used to insert nail heads below the surface of wood so as to hide the nail head and improve the appearance of the workpiece. The nail punch as you see is used with a hammer and drives the nail head below the surface of the workpiece. A nail gun is a tool that gives precision as well as speed when nailed joints have to be made. Remember that such tools should always be used under proper supervision and while respecting all specified safety norms. Nailing correctly requires an understanding of wood. In simple terms, the wood grain refers to the direction of the wood fiber that makes up natural timber. The term along grain refers to the same direction as the wood fiber. Across grain refers to the direction perpendicular to wood fiber. 
and end grain refers to the tip of the grain that had been cut across. Do you recognize the type of wood joint that has been illustrated here? Yes, this is a butt joint. It is quite easy to make but it is also rather weak. In this situation, it has been strengthened through dovetail nailing. When nails are inserted perpendicularly into wood, the joint can still be pulled apart. However, when the nails are inserted towards each other in the shape of a dovetail, it is more difficult to separate the joint and also makes it much stronger. Nailing along the grain of wood, especially close to end grain, causes the wood to split. Therefore, it is advised to stagger the nails. In this way, the wood does not split. To join two pieces of wood together, we may use nails. We have on the table different types of nail which has been displayed. For example, here we have what we call wire nail, and here we have uh, panel pins. This one is a tack nail, and we have, lastly, cloud nail. In order to drive the nails into the wood, we have to use a hammer of appropriate size. For example, here, again, it is displayed on the table, different sizes of, of hammer. If I have to choose a nail of this length, I'm going to choose among these three hammers this one because it is of an appropriate weight. Now I'm going to join these two pieces of wood together using the wire nail. Okay? Before joining them together, I'm going to place one of them in the vise. Right? This is done in order to secure one of them firmly, so that when we are nailing, we have a nice joint. Before nailing, I'm going to use what we call the, a bradawl to, to, to have a small indentation on the surface, so that when we are nailing, the nail stays in position. I'm now placing the other piece of wood onto the first one, right, and start nailing in the Now I'm going to insert the second nail. And this method of nailing, we call it the parallel nailing. In order to fix a piece of plywood onto a frame, I'm now going to use panel pin, right, to fix it onto the surface. Now for us to have a fine finished work, I'm going to use what we call a nail punch to drive the head of the panel pin a bit lower than the surface of the wood. We are now going to make another joint what we call the staggered nailing. But same as last time, we are going to use the bradawl to make a slight indentation on the surface of the wood so that when we are nailing, the nail stays in position, right? Let us start now. I'm going to use also a tri-square to check whether it is at 90 degrees to one another. And this one is the final one.
if you look closely at the joint, you may see that the position of the nail takes some sort of a V-shape, right? In fact, we have now a harder joint, right? And the nail is put in this position to avoid end splitting of the grain. Can you now identify the type of nail that has been used to affix the number plates onto the doors? Correct, it is the round wire nail. Do you think you can identify the type of nail used for joining the crate? The correct answer is the nail staple. What about the nails used to join the fabric to these chairs? Yes, it is a clout nail. During this lesson, we have been able to see common types of nails. We have also seen the tools used during nailing. In the coming video, we will be looking at other joining methods. We have come to the end of this lesson. Thank you for going through this video with us and please catch up on the next lesson for joining methods.